Hello Performance Ninjas and welcome to the second lab assignment about vectorization. This will be a very short video since I already gave an introduction about vectorization in the previous lab assignment. So let's go straight to the problem. Here I just plug the code from the lab assignment into the compiler explorer. And by the way, notice the nice performance ninja logo on top. Alright, so this code iterates over an array of uh, unsigned 16-bit integers and accumulates its values, right? But also, this code accounts for unsigned integer overflow that could happen. And this is basically what the second statement inside the loop is doing, right? And remember, when an overflow happens, we basically wrap around, right? And it could happen that the result which is in ACC will be less than the value that we added, right? And this is a signal for us that the overflow happened. And in this case, we will increment the accumulator by one. Not a super complicated code, right? Now, let's take a look at the assembly code on the right panel, which was generated by Clang14. You can see no vector instructions, but instead compiler unrolled the loop by a factor of 8. And this is basically the reason why you see um, 8 addition instructions and 8 add carry instructions, right? And so for an add instruction, we load um, the 16 bits uh, from memory and we accumulate uh, that into the AX register, which is a uh, lower part of an EAX register, right? And then the add carry instruction is a little bit weird actually, right? So it may seem to you that it doesn't change the value of AX. However, in fact, it uh, also uh, takes carry flag from the previous instruction as an input, right? And so whenever an overflow in add instruction happened, we will also, it, 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 will, it will be reflected in the carry flag and add C will add the value of the carry flag into the AX as well, right? So this is basically how we account for unsigned integer overflows. And on the left bottom panel, I added the compiler optimization reports. So if you start hovering your mouse around those red blocks, uh, you will be able to see what optimizations compiler made or not made for a particular line of code, right? And so in this case, it shows us that the loop was not vectorized with a reason that I think is somewhat hard to digest, right? It says value that could not be identified as reduction is used outside the loop. But in our case, it basically means that we have a, a loop carry dependency. It also says that um, it unrolled the loop by a factor of eight, which is exactly what we see in the assembly code, right? The problem though, is that loop unrolling doesn't help much in this case, since we have uh, this long uh, dependency chain inside, inside the loop over AX register, and it's quite clear uh, once we, you know, take a look at the assembly, right? Because you see every instruction here takes AX as an input and also it writes uh, the result into the AX, right? And so the thing here is that next instruction cannot execute until the previous one finished. In some cases, it is possible to break a uh, loop carry dependency and this is one of those cases. In this code, we basically do two things, right? First, we accumulate the values, and second, we uh, count the number of overflows, right? And in the original code, those two operations depend on each other, right? And in order to solve this lab assignment, you need to think about how you can do those two operations independently. Next, I will show the solution for this lab assignment, however, if you still want to work on it yourself, it's now a good time to pause the video and try improving the code. Having said that, here is how you can uh, break a loop carry dependency. 
here is an idea. So instead of using a 16-bit accumulator, we can use a wider type for our accumulator. And then when we add two 16-bit integers together, we will not wrap around, right? But instead, we will increment the upper half of a 32-bit integer, right? And this is how we detect if an overflow happened. And as we keep on adding and adding 16-bit uh, values into our accumulator, right? We will have the number of integer overflows in the upper half of the 32-bit value, right? And then the last step will be to just add two halves of the 32-bit accumulator together, right? And this is how we get the final result. However, there is uh, one edge case uh, we need to remember about. In the last step, when we add uh, two halves of a 32-bit accumulator, the result may also overflow, and we need to account for that. Here is how you can implement it in the code. This is the baseline code, uh, and this is our, our solution. So, you know, just following the idea that I just described, uh, here we have a, a simple loop that just accumulates uh, blindly all the values, right? And this is super easy for a compiler to vectorize um, using horizontal adds, um, the reduction operation, right? And then we sum up two halves of our 32-bit uh, accumulator and we do it twice, right? Just uh, remember that we need to account for, for potential overflow uh, when we will uh, sum up the, the two halves, right? Uh, let's uh, validate our solution and it validates. And as usual, our last step will be to check the speed up um, of our solution. So let me uh, comment out this define and now I'm ready to run uh, my check speed up Python script, which will measure our solution against the baseline. And okay, we have a nice uh, 10x uh, speed up. Uh, which is a result of us uh, breaking the uh, loop carry dependency, which in turn allows compiler to vectorize our loop. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have questions or comments. See you in the next lab assignment. Take care.